Welcome to the Justice Journal podcast. I'm Sacramento County District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert. I hope you enjoy this podcast series where we discuss important public safety issues and provide insight into who we are as an office and what we do both in the courtroom and in the community to provide the highest level of public safety through prosecution, prevention, and innovation. In this episode, we will feature the panel discussion from our Public Safety and Community Appreciation Luncheon, where the topic of discussion was Heroes in Humanity. Moderated by District Attorney Anne-Marie Schubert, the panelists represented community and faith-based organizations as well as law enforcement. So at this point, I'd like to do is invite our panel members up so we can start our panel discussion and talk about some important issues. So we have uh, Mervyn Brookins, co-founder of Brother to Brother, executive director of La Familia's Rachel Rios, Pastor Anthony Sadler uh, from Shiloh Baptist Church, and Chief Brian Noblet from Elk Grove Police Department. So thank you all. Okay, so um, softball questions. First one is pretty simple. So if, we'll start with Chief Noblet. If you can just tell, introduce yourself, tell us about yourself and your organization. You have less than 30 seconds to answer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that is a pretty soft one. That's not on. Can you hear me now? Okay, so I failed the first test to turn on the microphone. Um, good afternoon. My name is Brian Noblet. It's uh, my absolute honor to serve as the Elk Grove uh, Chief of Police. And uh, that's well within the 30 second uh, timeline. So I'll stop there. <laughs> well, that's a disadvantage. I'm a Baptist pastor. It you takes can have us more a than while. 30. You get, you get three minutes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Avery. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. Again, my name is Anthony Sadler. I have the privilege of pastoring the historic Shiloh Baptist Church. But I'm here actually in the capacity as the lead pastor for the Sacramento Police Department Cops and Clergy Program. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Rios. I'm the executive director of La Familia Counseling Center a nonprofit here in Sacramento, celebrating 45 years. Hello, everyone. My name is Mervyn Brookings. I'm co-founder of Brother to Brother, a nonprofit organization in Del Paso Heights. So, so obviously, we all know that this year's theme is Heroes and Humanity. So I'll start with you, Mervyn. Maybe you can tell, what's up? You get a little stressed out there. Um, Just a little bit. OK, so uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your organization, what you do, and what, how would you describe somebody that you consider a hero within your organization? Okay. That's a little difficult after watching that video. Um, I don't know. That's a challenging question because it speaks directly to a narrative that we're trying to change in our community, a narrative we're trying to change and, and sustain. Um, brother to brother, we really don't view the things that we do in our community as uh, heroic or exceptional or extraordinary. Um, more so like it's just our responsibility as men, our role as men in the community. It's unfortunate that the expectations and the bar has been uh, lowered so much that things in other communities that are just the norm and ordinary, um, you know, out in Del Paso Heights, people consider extraordinary or, or amazing. So. Brother to brother, we're just out there trying to do what we can for our community, raise that bar uh, so that that narrative changes. We, it's like we have to get back to normal so that we can then become exceptional like some of the men and women we saw in that video. Okay, you're not really answering the question. So I'm going to do it for Mervyn because I consider, so are you okay if I tell a little personal story? Sure. So I didn't know Mervyn until about maybe a year or so ago, maybe, I'd heard about this guy. Um, Brother to Brother is a, an organization that helps people in his community. But Mervyn, Mervyn, for a long period of time, was incarcerated. I didn't even know this till probably six months ago. Um, and he has, I consider him to be of the highest quality character of probably anybody I've met. And I'm, I'm quite confident that folks like Chief Hahn and, and Rochelle Dittmore and other people that know the work they're doing agree with me. And what he does is he doesn't just partner with one group or another group. He, I mean, just this week he was at our DA Citizens Academy talking about the relationships he's built with the DAs, the public defenders, all different folks. 
And then the following day, he was out at Mule Creek State Prison talking to inmates about the importance of victims' rights and things of that nature. So um, I don't have any doubt, and you can see it in the video, that Mervyn Brookins is a hero in humanity. So he won't say it, but it's true. And everybody on the stage is as well. So I'm um, now. Thank uh, you. All right, you got it. <laughs> Rachel Rios right. also. So hero is a, is a tough word, and I do understand you know, why that's difficult. Um, but I would say the heroes in our organization are our staff. You know, I would say the heroes are our community who, through resilience, you know, um, overcome obstacles that, that I, I don't know that I could. Um, and our partners. Um, everything we do is about partnering with organizations, um, working together. And so I would say it starts really with uh, compassion. And it starts with people who care, who, um, as you said, it's your responsibility to help others to pave that way that has been paved back, paved for you to give back to the community. And I see that in the staff and, and their commitment to their community every day. And so those are my heroes. Can you tell the folks, I mean, I know what you guys do, but tell them sure. a little bit about what... La Familia does on a daily basis. Absolutely. So our name, La Familia Counseling Center, would uh, lead you to believe that we provide behavioral health services, and we do. We do children's behavioral health for children 0 to 21 who are Medi-Cal eligible. That's just one part of what we do. We run a family resource center. We're one of the nine family resource centers here in Sacramento. We run a robust birth and beyond program, which is parenting, effective parenting, crisis intervention, domestic violence, school readiness. Um, it's just a whole Home visitation. Um, we also do, we have a career center, so we do job placement, subsidized employment, um, paid uh, internships for young people as well as job placement and job training. We have youth programs where we work with leadership as well as youth that have um, started having challenges, including um, working with SAC PD on truancy sweeps, curfew sweeps, um, and working with probation, youth, and reentry. And then we do health programs. So we do, um, I think as was there, we do health clinics and health education, Medi-Cal enrollment. So we really provide a gamut of services, and then we do uh, uh, that with partners. We bring other partners into our organization, to our two facilities. We have two sites, and um, we bring partners there, like Fairytale Towns, Adventure Play Area, 916 Inc., um, Adult Basic Ed, and ESL classes. Things that we don't do that we know the community needs, we'll bring other partners so that we can have a one-stop facility for them. Awesome. Thank you. All right. You get more than 30 seconds, but you got to tell us a little bit about your church as well. Okay. Um, Heroes, I, I grew up with four DVRs and uh, even video recorders, so uh, Heroes as a child was uh, the comic books that we would exchange, Marvel or DC comic books, and we would pick our favorite uh, superhero. Uh, as I've gotten older and matured, I found out that heroes are actually everyday people uh, that will take advantage of an opportunity to, uh, ex to uh, possess it or to present exemplary uh, performance and care towards others. It's a character trait uh, with an opportunity. The character traits I look for are integrity, honesty, uh, what I call the three C's, which are caring, uh, commitment, and consistency. Uh, caring, if you're, if you're in this room and you serve others uh, and you're able to do it without caring, uh, you're probably uh, in the wrong business. Uh, we have to have a care and a love for those that we serve. Uh, commitment, uh, where there's uh, probably dozens of setbacks, that, some of them that would discourage us along the way, uh, but a commitment leads us to a place to where we realize that what we're trying to accomplish is bigger than ourselves, so we push on through the discouragement. Uh, and then consistency. Uh, consistency, quite simply, is don't give up. Don't, don't let anybody deter you. Don't let any situation deter you. Don't give up. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. Um, as far as uh, the work we do, Shiloh Baptist is 163 years old this year. I have the privilege of pastoring the church that I grew up in. I was carried there at two years old. Uh, very strong, uh, very dynamic church in the region of Oak Park. Uh, through our Cops and Clergy program, uh, which was developed through Bishop Carthen and then Deputy Chief Sam Summers uh, sometime about eight years back now, 
the idea was birthed, what would happen if the police department partnered with local pastors uh, and contacted people that had negative contact with law enforcement. Uh, sometimes even the very officer that arrested them uh, shows up later in our triple C or downtown or even in their homes uh, with a pastor that wants to walk through their process and help them, not with their case, but with some of the choices that they've made uh, to get them to that spot. Uh, so that's uh, some of the work we do in the cost and clergy. We'll talk about more later. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit about our department, I imagine, at times. Uh, but really, as the law enforcement representative on the panel, you know, what I would say is, and this was evidenced in the slideshow, certainly, there are a lot of ways to define heroes and heroic behaviors and actions. Certainly, uh, courage can certainly be closely tied to that, and you, you know, your mind pictures maybe the classic uh, rescuing someone from a burning building or a vehicle, um, something of that nature. And certainly, as, as I think Chaplain Mindy mentioned at, at the beginning of the program today, you know, we all do take an oath, and we take that seriously, and we're, we, you know, we're, we're pledging in that oath to protect and serve, service being the key word there probably, you know, our various communities. And so as I look out, I see, you know, good friends of mine, other law enforcement leaders and practitioners, and I can, I, you know, I can really proudly sit here and say that we all have officers and staff members in our organizations who exhibit those behaviors every day. Um, they maintain that pledge and that oath that they took. But I also like the, the, what we saw in the slideshow, which was a, a slightly different focus on heroic behaviors, and that's the, the real dedication to service in our communities and, and making sure that we're, we're, we're you know, properly serving all uh, communities uh, you know, within our cities and our jurisdictions. And, and, and that really, um, for me, that really moves the, ne the needle uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, societal evolution because you know, as we work together and we commit to serve one another and better understand each other, um, I, I think that's how we evolve as a society. So um, that was a great story, by the way. I want to commend again the SAC PD officers that received the, uh, the, the um, Service Above Self Award earlier. That was a great start and, and really a phenomenal story. And I think we all, as law enforcement organizations, as public safety organizations, uh, we all have um, stories like that and we have staff like that that we see go out every day and do, do really generous uh, uh, acts of service like that. All right, thanks, Chief. All right, next question. I'll start with um, Rachel. Tell us about your, any challenges that your organization has faced and how you've seen heroes rise within your organization. If you can give us an example, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so any nonprofit goes through challenges, obviously, you know, um, uh, ensuring that throughout the years that you're able to provide consistent services for the community. I would say, you know, in the last couple of years, um, the biggest challenge that we've faced is the rhetoric that happens in our communities, um, anti-immigration rhetoric. Because what that's done is it's um, cast people who are already in the shadows further into the shadows. And so what's happened is you have services that are available um, that sometimes people don't want to take advantage of because they're afraid to come forward. And so how you address that, how you um, reach out to the community and build that trust has been a, um, an important part of the work that we do is to be able to build the trust with the community, to be able to build the trust with the community and our law enforcement community by um, having law enforcement officers, having our uh, community officer come out and be a part of our services when we do things like um, we started the three on three with SAC PD, which is a basketball game that the officers will play with our young people in the summer, um, having opportunities where the community can see folks in that uh, in a humane way as people, as individuals, and not be afraid to come to have services. So I think that those have been some of the challenges that we've faced, um, and those are some of the ways that we've overcome it. I talk about the importance of working together with other community organizations and with our partners because we can't do anything together. And so really it's, it's about looking at those challenges as they come forward and seeing who can we bring to the table to help us address those and resolve those, um, those challenges. So. Excellent. All right, Pastor Sadler. In the lane that we work in, uh, the, the main challenge is centered around systemic or historical mistrust 
uh, between law enforcement and the communities, especially underserved communities. Um, but even in the midst of these challenges, uh, heroes arise. Uh, we find that if we can create a space to where people can actually talk and humanize both the law enforcement to community and community to law enforcement, uh, that we'll find that we have more things in common than we have uh, differences. And, and that's the beginning. That's the beginning of something because I believe that it's only through relationship building that uh, the mistrust can diminish and that trust can be established. Uh, one of the heroes uh, that, that exemplified that over the course of our cops and clergy time would be a uh, young man, I won't name him because you guys will harass him, but he was a sergeant when we started. He was an officer. Uh, he was uh, over one of the GET teams. And he really wasn't into this new cops and clergy program. He kind of viewed it as a hug-a-thug program. And he really wasn't feeling it at all. Uh, but uh, it was a chief emphasis, and he was uh, he wanted to keep his job, so he engaged. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as we went on, what we found out, though, was he, the, the usual protocol would, the officer would introduce uh, the pastor that was with him. Uh, they would sit back, and then the pastor would just do what pastors do uh, with the uh, person that we were engaging with. Well, we found that over time, this same officer that uh, did, did not feel this program at all was starting to engage and, and do some problem solving with the people, uh, even to a point to where he moved to a, a mentor program, uh, actually was taking kids, starting with his own son, who was having some challenges at the time, and sending him off to a, a program off-site, kind of a boot, one of those boot camp kind of programs that would help, get, uh, help kids prioritize their lives uh, uh, out of the area which they were having struggles with. So that, that's probably uh, one of the heroic stories was we changed this hardcore cop uh, who was reluctant to community outreach to uh, one that became a champion of community outreach. And, and now I'm happy to say he's a lieutenant now. Hey. <laughs> Good story. Chief? Um, so the, it's interesting that the first two panel members talked about trust and, and public trust in particular. And, any of us in law enforcement, I think all of us in the room, you know, understand the importance of public trust. It's, it's really that the foundation, it's the baseline upon which we get work done in the community. And so we, we as I thought about this, um, we've, had a, we've had a couple of instances in the past um, in Elk Grove in which the public trust was, was uh, compromised somewhat. And those, those incidences occurred a couple of years ago, and they involved a couple of police encounters um, with uh, involving uh, residents with disabilities. And in particular, um, in both cases, uh, they were individuals on the autism spectrum. And uh, frankly, the encounters um, didn't go particularly well in, in terms of uh, our interaction with those individuals. And what happened from those incidents um, has really uh, propelled us into a relationship uh, that I'm really proud of with our um, community with, with disabilities. Um, it, it's, we've really covered a lot of ground between those happening and where we are today. And what really led to a lot of that uh, started with just, a, a, frankly, a single individual within our organization. It's our uh, Public Information Officer Jason Jimenez, who many of you might know. Jason has a family member who is on the autism spectrum. And so he was particularly touched and influenced by these interactions. And so Jason came to me and said, look, I think we need to do some, we, we need to do some really in-depth training with our staff to do our level best to ensure that, you know, any encounters in the future with folks on the spectrum or with disabilities, um, you know, that we can at least uh, position ourselves for much better outcomes. So we did that training, but we didn't stop there. Um, Jason also spearheaded an effort internally um, that we call Fly Fit, and that's an affiliation that we have with a group called Fly Brave for Autism. And so what we do, and we're about to start our second year of that program, is that my, you know, myself and a lot of our staff uh, we go out a couple of times a week and we actually do workouts with, uh, with, with, with clients from various organizations. Um, and, and, and these folks all have some level of disability. And it's just a, it, it's a, you know, it's a bonding opportunity. It's a relationship building opportunity. So we've done that, which we're really proud of. 
And then um, about six months ago, we had our first open house at our department, but it was the open house was specific to uh, families with um, developmentally disabled children, and that was amazing. I mean, it was it was heartwarming. Um, it didn't just feel good; it did good. I mean, it really moved the needle in terms of our relationship with that community in particular. And so, I've commended him, you know, publicly many times. But that really, that re that effort was really led by our PIO, and uh, he did a great job getting us to where we are today. And it's certainly something that we, I've become very personally proud of. And and I'm proud of our organization and our city and our community for getting to where we are today. Excellent. All right. I'm going to now call on Mervyn, and it's got to include some story about a softball game. Oh. <laughs> that is you know not what fair. I mean, <laughs> Chief Hawn, over there. Uh, yeah, he, you know, now I'm going to have to tell it because he'll definitely tell it. So I'm going to have to echo the panel about, I will tell the truth, Chief, <laughs> about trust and relationship building. Um, that's one of the things brother to brother is at the forefront of. Uh, building relationships with not only law enforcement, your office, but any organization that services the community. Uh, so my story begins about two years ago, before the softball game, Chief. So there was, there was a shooting at uh, Mama Marks Park in Del Paso Heights, where originally it was thought to be gang related, but a young lady, young girl about two years old, and maybe a couple other people got uh, shot. And I was actually on my way out to Juvenile Hall when I got the call. So I turned around and go to the park. When I get there, the community is outraged. It's really hot this day. The community is outraged. The scene is dynamic, it's chaotic. Uh, there's a couple of young men, young black men that are in the cars, in the police cars. And then you have a couple of who I thought were rookie officers trying to maintain the perimeter and calm everybody down. So. I walk up to where one of these officers were, and we had an interesting conversation, to say the least. I'm like, why do you have these young men in the car? It's hot. And he said, well, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, they may have or may not have something to do with it. We're just trying to get control of the scene. And I'm like, well, that is too hot. Get them out of the car. Don't treat them like you, want, you wouldn't want your family treated. And we go back and forth. So over the course of it, uh, this dialogue, I said, well, if you really, he says, well, you know, I'm trying to be a part of the community. I'm trying to do my job, get to know people. And I said, well, if you really want to do that, why don't you come out and coach with me? Because I run the youth sports programs out there. I said, why don't you come out and help out? And then you would get to know the community. And he says, okay, I will. And we exchanged numbers. Of course, I didn't think that he would ever call. A couple of months later, I get a call, and I'm not going to be like pastor who don't say the name. I'm going to say the name. It was Officer Lewis. He calls and said, hey, this is Officer Lewis. And I'm like, Officer Lewis? He said, yeah, the guy that was at the park. I said, wow. He said, hey, man, I'm, I'm in this area, and I, you know, I want to get involved. And you said, give you a call. So I said, OK, well, we're practicing on this night. Lo and behold, Officer Lewis shows up to football practice and started helping out with the youth in, uh, on our Grand Youth uh, Junior Pacer teams. He said, I'll be back. I said, OK. So the next time he, bring, he comes back, he brings another officer, Sergeant Chandler, who is a lot more athletic than Officer Lewis. <laughs> come to find out. Not forget about the softball game. I'm not going to forget about the softball game. I just wanted to make that note that Officer Chandler actually came out and really, he was actually really able to help. Uh, Officer Lewis just happened to be there. But I, I said, I, I'm saying this, so ever since then, they kept coming. They kept showing up. And then one time they brought like the whole SWAT team in the middle of practice. So you can imagine all these kids and families out in Grant Stadium practicing, and you see like 15, 20 officers coming into the stadium. Everybody's like, what's going on? They didn't know they were coming to help coach. But the beautiful thing about that is because they kept coming so much, they started tearing down walls. Little by little, the community got to know them. And we continued to deliberately build that bridge. Fast forward a year and a half later, after developing a 
good relationship with Captain uh, Seaford and the rest of the group. Uh, we meet regular with our officers in the North area. Uh, a lot of the thugs in the community sit down with regular officers and have real talk conversations to get to know each other. A Couple of years later, we were in one of those meetings and somebody brought up the idea of, well, we should have a softball game. And so we said, well, yeah, let's have a softball game. This is with brother to brother. Mind you, as the district attorney so graciously shared that I was one time incarcerated, <laughs> brother to brother <laughs> is made up of a group of formerly incarcerated and incarcerated guys, right? <laughs> So it's not the most popular thing to do to be affiliated with law enforcement. But we had the game. And it was a good game. It really was a good game. The officers won. However, the officers that came out to play didn't look like any of the officers that worked, uh, worked in North Area. I'ma just say that. Couple of ringers going on. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll end it with, with this, is that so the officers that were there before the game and after the game, we embraced each other and ended with prayer. And it was so beautiful that some of those guys literally had just been arrested by some of those officers. So you can imagine what that, that was like. But by the end of that game, Bears were broke, were, 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 were crossed and torn down, and there was an understanding that put, took place. So as it relates to hero, on both sides, because officers, like you said, don't always want to be seen as the hug a thug type, and the, the brothers in the community who I did not know didn't know how to play softball at that time. <laughs> it was new to me. I was like, really? Um, they had the courage, they had the courage to step up and say, hey, you know what, we're gonna build these relationships and I don't care who knows about it. So that day, that moment, and ever since then, those efforts to, to build that relationship and show the rest of the community that this is what a healthy community looks like, that day they were all heroes to me. Very good answer. Very Okay, we got three minutes left, so that gives you, I don't know, less than 30 seconds for the last one. I think we've done a pretty amazing job kind of showcasing what we want to talk about. What, but what would you say we can do to inspire other people to rise above these challenges that we face as a community and promote humanity? So, Pastor Sadler? I think it, one, two. Merv talked so long he killed the mic. <laughs> I think it, it really starts uh, on getting serious about the problems that we are facing. Uh, this is a very sensitive subject for me and I'm sure for many of you. Uh, I think all of our conversation needs to start with the sanctity of life, um, that all life is valued and all life is uh, important. And uh, we have to continue to find ways to, uh, to uh, uh, reduce the loss of life through the senseless gunfire, uh, whether it be loss of life on law enforcement side or the community side. Uh, that person means something to someone. Uh, and we need to try to, as a society, uh, to reduce gun violence and, and really recognize uh, that taking someone's life is not a lighthearted thing and it's not something that should be taken lightly on whichever side of the equation you're on. Uh, then I, I believe it begin, it goes on into, again, the relationship building and the humanizing both officers and community. Um, some of the things we've done uh, with the cops and clergy have been adopt a class uh, where we go into third and fifth graders and, and we speak to them on an established curriculum uh, of a series of topics such as what do you do when you find a gun, uh, uh, what, what is bullying and things like that uh, to try to take those young minds before they've been tainted by uh, the culture or the environment and keep them at a positive viewpoint towards law enforcement. Uh, some of the uh, more recent programs we've been able 
able to do uh, in this past year have been uh, the Walk in My Shoes program, uh, where we take a community member. Uh, we even took uh, uh, people that work in uh, barber shops, and we have a cop, uh, either a young uh, cop that has just graduated from the academy or an FTO, uh, and because we think we thought it was important that the FTOs see the same perspective, and so we we partner them with this community member. They spend four hours or more with the community member in their environment. They, they can come uh, out of uniform, relax in their environment, and really get a feel of what that community looks like and what are, what the, what are those things that are important to a community, uh, the community in which they serve. And then the, flip, the coin flips over, and that community member now goes on a ride along with an officer and, and sees from their perspective some of the challenges that law enforcement officers have to face just on calls to service. That, which in large part have been initiated through the very same community that is abusing them for being there. Uh, so, so those are some of the things through the Walk in My Shoes program. And then lastly, uh, our Friday night peace walks in the Oak Park area. Uh, I'm really proud, glad to be a part of that along with the SAC PD, FIRE, uh, nonprofits like the Urban League uh, and City of Refuge. Uh, we, we go out every Friday from 5 to 6. We engage the community with one simple message, and that's a message message of peace. Uh, we walk, we hand out pamphlets. On the back it has resources. We invite the community to come join us. Uh, we hit different segments of Oak Park each Friday night unless it's raining. Uh, then we call it for the rain. But other than that, uh, we're out there on Friday night. We'll be out there tomorrow night leaving from New Hope Baptist Church on uh, 32nd and 12th Avenue. Anybody wants to come join us from 5 to 6, uh, we'd love to have you on our peace walk. So uh, we, we understand that this what we do is not to answer all. Uh, it's just one slice of a, of a pie. And uh, these, these guys are heroes that I'm up here with because they work from a different perspective and sometimes on a different slice of the pie, as many of you do. Uh, but we all have to do something. We all have to engage our community. We all have a stake uh, in making our community the best place to raise our families in. OK, we got to end it on that. Sorry. Killed the mic, buddy. <laughs> But it's okay. Um, can we just thank our panel members for this incredible conversation? Thank you guys very much. Join us for the next episode where we will talk about the Stockton Boulevard partnership with the partnership's executive director, Frank Louie, community prosecutor, Leslie Kolb, and sheriff's deputy, Johnny Lee. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find all of the Justice Journal podcasts on our website at sacda.org, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube.